All right, the common magician here with a very quick discussion on gaffed cards. So uh, first of all, I want to talk briefly about um, where you can find information for making gaffed cards. I'm going to put a link to a tutorial in the description here, a tutorial that I followed before that I think is very comprehensive in uh, how you make gaffed cards and card splitting if you like visual representations. However, if you have uh, a book like um, Expert Card Technique by Hubert and Browie, there is actually a section in there you'll find right near the end uh, on card splitting and uh, on uh, making double-faced and double-back cards. So there are uh, places even in some very old books that you probably have that talk about how to do that. Um, very quickly, I want to talk about some card hacks uh, before we get into uh, discussing these um, uh, gaff cards. First of all, uh, it's good to have double jokers. So one thing that you want to do to get a deck looking like a, a, a deck that you might buy with magicians in mind from uh, you know some of these online vendors, uh, with these decks printed for magicians, uh, and you want double uh, uh, matching jokers, buy in bulk your cards, like bicycle cards where you have two reds, two blacks. Take out the uh, similar decks, the two red decks for example, Go in there, you'll find two types of jokers. You'll find one that's color and one that's in black and white. Switch the black and white for the color from each box, and you'll have one deck that has two colors, you'll have one deck that has two black and whites, and you'll have two decks that have matching jokers for matching joker um, needs, if you have that. Uh, I have a deck here, which is an Arco deck. This was a 2011 reprint of this pattern. Uh, I bought a brick of these a number of years ago uh, just so that I would have a few of them to, to work with. They printed this with magicians in mind. It kind of comes with two jokers that are not identical. They're pretty similar. I wish that that wouldn't have that mark on there. They would be identical, but I have enough of these that I can switch them out. Um, but it did come with two gaff cards. So decks come essentially with four spare cards other than the 52. You're going to have two jokers and you're going to have two gaff cards. Now these typically are commercial cards. Uh, there will either be um, a commercial card that has a back printed on it or it's a commercial card that just has some information printed and there'll be two of those. One of them might even be the guarantee card. B cards come with a guarantee card which can serve as a third joker. Um, so you have a joker that's black and white, a joker that's in color, and then a guarantee card which has the joker logo on it, logo on it and then some uh, text on there about defects and returning the deck if you find any defects. Um, now that card has a back print on it, so you could use those commercial cards for making gaff cards without ruining any other cards. Now this Arco deck came with a, a gaff that has a blank. So it actually came printed like that and a double blank. So this is printed on regular stock and it's cut from the stock, which means that these cards can go into the deck and you can pharaoh the deck and they won't get in the way. So these are these are commercially available gaff cards that came with that deck and that's kind of a nice little perk there uh, for that particular type of cards. Now if you want to have cards like that, you can purchase them uh, from Bicycle in particular in uh, that Bicycle back. Uh, rider back uh, for your decks, or you can make them. Now, if you make them, just know that homemade gaff cards are not going to uh, act and behave exactly like printed cards, so just be aware of that. Um, so a couple little hacks there. Another hack, if you have some older cards that are starting to get a little bit sticky and you're going to use them for gaffs, you might want to try to get them to be a little bit more smooth and get some of that uh, wear and stickiness out. I found that using a regular pencil eraser and just running it uh, kind of firmly around the back of the card or the face of the card, whatever the case may be, I found that that removes a little bit of the residue that's on there that you can't see that makes it sticky and allows it to slide a little bit better. So using a, an eraser to clean up. Now, you couldn't do this for a whole deck, so don't think that you can take a deck of sticky cards and make them new again. That won't work. But you can use you know, one card for the uh, gaff cards that you're going to use to clean them up. Very quickly, making a uh, blank face card using a regular card, you can take a, a small number card, an ace, a two, or three, preferably in red ink, because red ink comes off a little bit easier. Take a Q-tip and isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and you can actually rub off the ink. Now, it will ruin the... Um, 
uh, embossed finish a little bit and we'll kind of smooth that out. But I found that what you can do is take a white crayon, the crayon that has no use from the crayon box, you never really use it, and you can uh, then color over the place where you remove the ink where that embossing has been rubbed down. And then take a paper towel and rub off the crayon as best you can and it will restore um, the kind of semi-gloss finish to it such that you won't notice uh, those places that have been worn down. Uh, now the embossing will be gone, but the finish will be right, so you can do that. Uh, so that's a, a little hack for you to make a blank face card. Now I found that this doesn't perfectly remove the ink. You'll still find under close scrutiny a little bit of that ink left in there. Um, and if you try to get rid of all of it, you may go too far. So if you want to make a blank face card, that's a quick way to do it. If you want to make a blank face card otherwise, one way to do it is to take some uh, uh, moderate cardstock, so kind of the thinner side of cardstock, and do the same thing. Take a white crayon and uh, color in a card size area in different directions. Take a paper towel, buff that down in so that you have uh, a nice clean semi-gloss finish. Turn it over, and then after you split cards, like you can see in the tutorial that I posted to, take the thick side, which has the uh, inner glue layer, which is black, and uh, the back and then you can uh, apply some rubber cement, use it in contact cement mode, apply it on the uh, one side here, apply it on the um, uh, non crayon side on your stock, let it dry, and then adhere those two sides together and rub them out nice and clean and clear and take some scissors and cut very cleanly all the way around. And you can end up with a very nice looking uh, uh, blank face backed card, which is what I did here. So this uh, stands up to pretty close scrutiny. You would notice that it doesn't have any embossing, but this otherwise looks like a pretty uh, commercialized um, uh, printing of a uh, blank face card that could be used for most things where you would need it. Uh, so that's one idea. Now the Hofsenser card, which is a whole other thing. Actually, before I get to the Hofsenser card, let me talk about uh, double backers and double facers. I found uh, that when you're splitting cards, you'll end up with two sides um, that will be talked about in that tutorial. One side would be uh, the uh, thin side, which could be the back or it could be the face, depending on how you split it. You do have some choice in that. Uh, I found that if you take uh, the thin side and a thick side of another card and you repaste those back together, that the thin side will be a little bit bumpy. Uh, and that's because the imperfections from the paper show through a little bit. So here's a double backer I made uh, using that technique, using a thin and a thick. And I did find that it, it doesn't quite come out perfectly smooth. Now it's good enough that it worked for me there. Um, but if you want it to be smooth, what you can do is you take the thick sides with the glue on it from both uh, and glue those together. Now it'll end up slightly thicker than a regular card, just a little bit. But it should still feel kind of like a regular card. It'd be close enough. And I started making all of my double backers and double facers by using the thick sides on both sides. Um, I did that also for a couple of um, decks that I bought commercially that came with commercial cards that had the backs printed on one side. So uh, this uh, stud deck came with uh, two matching jokers, which was kind of nice. And then it came with two commercial cards that had the uh, regular back printed on the back side of it. And on the other side, one of them had rules for the game and the other one had uh, the um, uh, uh, hierarchy of hands. So I split those and I, I split them so that the back side was the thick side and then I took those two thick sides, sides and I glued them together and I made myself a really good double backer. So I did that with a few different decks. I did it with this one and I did it with a couple of bicycle novelty reprints. This is the bicycle auto bike uh, deck and I did the same thing. I took the commercial cards out and I made myself a double backer. So uh, that's something you can do if you're very careful. Um, Hofsenser card. Let's take a look at that concept very quickly. What you're going to need for a Hofsenser card is you're going to need thin layers only. So you don't want to save the uh, glue layer because the glue layer is not transparent or translucent. So you want a thin layer of a black, a thin layer of a uh, red, and then you want a thin layer of a back. And what you'll do is you'll glue together the thin layer back to a thin layer black, 
and then you would glue on top of that I found that if you just glue on the red you'll end up seeing the black through it because it's too thin so what I found is that you can take regular printer paper which is pretty thin and you can glue this down so a thin back um, thin back not a thick one but a thin back to a thin black uh, and then you take that glued uh, uh, section and glue it down to printer paper. Cut that out very carefully and then glue to that a thin red and it ends up making your um, black uh, inner sandwich section disappear behind the white. And then it stands up pretty well uh, underneath the light. So if I open up my light here and you can see uh, my Hofsons are card that I've done that to. Inside I can see my nine of spades, uh, and then when I turn it over I see my red six of diamonds. So you can see my nine of spades through that. So this has four layers, uh, thin back, thin black, uh, printer paper, and then a thin red. And this feels pretty much just like a regular card. This would pass pretty close scrutiny for someone to look at. I found that you can just use this as a dupe. Put it in your deck as a duplicate. Use it as a duplicate when you need one, and then use it as the Hofsinger card uh, ghost effect whenever you want to do that. So, very quick tutorial on um, gaff cards and my uh, hacks and ideas. Take a look at that other tutorial to look more in depth at splitting cards and gluing them together and some methods for doing it. And I wish you the best of luck with this and happy magicking.